I'm back. Uh, Barry from Very Fast Cars. Uh, we need to talk about cars. I need to talk about cars. This year's been crazy. This year's been absolutely intense. And uh, yeah, a big inspiration today was Williams kind of randomly releasing their 2017 Challenger, the FW40. I saw, I just wasn't expecting that. We've been, I've been counting down the days for the first unveil, which is supposed to be Sauber on Monday the 20th, if I'm not mistaken. And then, of course, it's happened every year, I'm pretty sure. Uh, at least every year I've been following launches that they, um, Williams, that is, uh, drops, drops either a rendering or a picture of the car. Um, so we see the 2017 car, I'll throw it on screen right now. At least that's the idea, <laughs> that's the plan. And uh, so you can kind of get a, a feel for that. Huge tires, 405 millimeter tires in the back. We'll see what it does. And... Um, I think they go from uh, 305s to 3... Uh, no, 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 245 to 305 uh, mil in front. So <laughs> the front tires are pretty much the size of a Porsche GT3 rear tire. Granted, they're still 13-inch wheels. If I had my ideal situation uh, at the same time as making the, these tires bigger, they would have actually made the wheels slightly larger. Um, especially because the cars, well, they actually won't be that much faster, but uh, the teams are somewhat limited by braking capacity because of the size of the wheels minimizing or, um, you know, infringing on the size of the brake disc. Um, we all know, well, we don't all know, but we certainly have seen, some of us, how unbelievably complicated uh, Formula One brakes are getting so something. I think this season they're going to have 1,500 um, cooling holes drilled into the side of the rotor. So, you know, you have your rotor like so, and then around the perimeter, all the way to the center, if I'm not mistaken, will be just hundreds upon hundreds of holes, less than a millimeter, maybe a millimeter uh, across. I think there's about four, five, maybe six on the, the one and a half inch width of the, the rotor. Okay, I'm uh, going on a tangent. So 2017, we have, yeah, the wider tires, the wider cars. Uh, if your tire's wider, the, the tire would infringe on body work, so they kind of needed to make the cars a little bit wider. Uh, I think they're, I think the, the floor is roughly eight inches for us Americans. Uh, I think it's roughly eight inches wider. I honestly don't know why they need a floor. Uh, it doesn't, I, I mean, other than aerodynamic purposes, but why? I mean, it, I don't think they're that aesthetically pleasing. I think they can get rid of the floor in general and just have the side pods come in underneath, have a nice um, diffuser down the middle. <laughs> Could be something to, th to think about. Um, I would like to talk about a, an idea I had for the future of the powertrains of the, uh, you know, just the Formula One powertrains. Right now we have just ethically complex motors and I'm actually okay with the complexity. I was at Formula One in Austin this year. I wish I made videos, I apologize. It was one hell of a trip. Um, yeah, the best, best trip of my life. And uh, yeah, it was, it was pretty much perfect weekend. We, um, did obviously hear the the cars though they are louder certainly having uh, the extra ducting from the turbocharger uh, kind of the wastegate if I'm if I'm not mistaken has its own outlet so that freed up air going through the original exhaust piping so uh, it, it made a little bit better flow which in turn made it a louder sound uh, not better sound but uh, they, they sound so much different in person than on TV. I watch every single damn race in the year, and in person, it is night and day. Uh, it is a different sound in person. They are still quiet, uh, relatively speaking. And I've never heard an absolutely modern F1 car in person. I've been to, like, Corsa Clienti, so that would have been the most modern, naturally aspirated F1 car that I've heard would be a 2003, so F Ferrari F2003, I think it was Rubens Barrichello's car. Um, that, that was a V10. 
that is really something. The nuances in person. I mean, it literally, it's such, it almost sounds like a cliche whenever I hear it, I think, but then I remember back to this. It literally does sound like a jet at takeoff at lower RPM. It's just this destruction of air that it literally just sounds like air is getting just destroyed, <laughs> literally. So, but my idea, let's let's not get on tangents. I'm gonna, I don't care how long my videos are anymore. I just want to talk. Um, I would, I, I will absolutely get these more structured uh, over time. I'm gonna start powering through these. I have so much spare time. Uh, I'm blessed to have a lot of spare time uh, for my lifestyle. So, Formula One, let's say 2021. Let's say that, because um, it looks like these engines will be frozen probably next year, depending on the parity between teams. Um, I guess I could touch on that really quick. Um, they, they eliminated the engine token system. So instead of essentially minimal intervention when it comes to development, which is what fucked over Honda and um, I mean, really, every brand that wasn't Mercedes. Mercedes just got it right the first time. Um, and that, honestly, comes down to resources. Um, they were able to model, most likely, and this is all speculation, but I'm guessing, um, an informed guess, is they were able to model like all these different concepts um, for this formula, the, the 1.6 turbocharged, um, the engine formula, hybrid engine formula. So now, now kind of pretty much everyone, maybe not Mercedes, but I suspect there's going to be drastic changes even to the Mercedes power unit, uh, will have a, essentially a clean sheet redesign for 2017. So, and since they are allowed a bit more fuel, which I don't think is going to change a whole lot, but since these are clean sheet redesigns, they should be, um, combustion should be that much more efficient, We're talking 2 3% more efficient. On top of the added fuel, granted, with the tires and the aero, they will be at full throttle more. So it really does kind of negate the extra, I think it's five kilos, so 12 pounds of, 12-ish pounds of fuel. Um, we'll see. Um, the FIA has also mandated certain parts within the power unit to kind of simplify or eliminate development for better or worse but um, we'll do a whole separate video on Liberty Media takeover and um, but here is my idea let's just jump to it um, what I think could be an ideal solution and kind of tickle everyone's fancy 2021 should come about and instead of eliminating the current rules they would be tweaked in a way that would um, ideally open up the window for more manufacturer interest, in my opinion, by, well, we have to, sorry, we have to talk quickly about um, how, how these current engines work, but it's, it's a quick, I can go over it quickly. Um, let's say Mercedes has their V6, it's 1.6 liters, it's so tiny, I mean, it's so damn tiny. Um, the engine's probably this big, <laughs> whatever. Um, but in between the V, there is the MGU-H, which with via shaft goes to the, um, goes through the turbine, the, the compressor um, side of the turbo. The, the, the um, turbine is what is fed by via the exhaust gases. So that spools up by exhaust gases and then via shaft that goes to essentially an electric motor, well it is an electric motor, uh, a motor generator unit, MGU, um, and they call it H for heat because it's kind of powered by heat in a sense, exhaust gas heat goes to the turbine into the, the shaft, a, a, a drive shaft of sorts, because the turbine's on one end of the V6, so the V6 is like this, let's say, we have a turbine on one end and then the compressor is on the other end, so this electric motor it can consistently keep the compressor at whatever RPM essentially is necessary. Um, I think these turbochargers are running eh, between 100 and 150,000 RPM at, at peak 
or generally close to peak um, performance per peak uh, RPM, um, boost pressure, if you will. So my, this will now segue into my concept. There, we could completely radically change the sound and the sh the show by eliminating in the next five years um, or by 2021 the turbine side of the turbocharger and that would essentially eliminate it wouldn't be a turbocharger anymore it would essentially be an electrically driven supercharger the turbo tur the turbine is what's f screwing over all the um, the noise that's coming from the little v6 and it would change it would change the architecture what i would like to see at the same time is how do i say this precisely the opening up of engine layouts i think that the fia or the governing body deciding these rules um, maybe the teams themselves wouldn't that be brilliant um, they would say okay we're gonna go with either six cylinders eight cylinders four cylinders uh, i don't think we're going to go above six cylinders anymore which is fine that's perfect like perfectly fine uh, but they should say six cylinders perhaps maybe increase displacement a tad 1.8 liters i would like to see that that's essentially 300 cc a cylinder uh that doesn't make a difference i'm just kind of ocd like that um, and also just as an aside a lot of manufacturers are kind of ditching the low displacement. It's actually proving to be less efficient because um, throttle application is needed more. Throttle, um, it, it just, the higher the displacement, the less load is needed. Um, I think that's the correct terminology. I could certainly work on all my uh, specific terms um, over the coming years, but um, I think that gets the point across. Like, like, Audi, for as an example, let's, Audi, come to F1. Um, they, their most efficient motor is now essentially a two liter. It used to be a 1.6 in their mainstream cars, whether it be a A3 or an A4. Um, they're realizing that the two liter is actually kind of a sweet spot when it comes to um, efficiency. You know, you're using less turbo pressure. You, you don't need to use as much throttle with a larger displacement. Um, and throttle is directly connected to fuel usage. That is, the less throttle you use, the less fuel you will uh, have injected. Have, you know, the, the, your air-fuel ratio will be lower. Um, okay. So, supercharge the motors. But not supercharge in the sense it's like, you know, connected to the, uh, the crankshaft. That's unnecessary because these electric motors are so damn efficient and precise and you know we have regenerative braking blah 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 I mean this is there's already there's two electric motors on these cars and uh, as a quick asterisk one of those should be able to start the fucking car sorry <laughs> family show but <laughs> I, I get a little frustrated that they still use some dude in back sticking a, a rod up the rear end of a F1 car to start it it's a joke uh, they have a 180 horsepower electric motor, essentially a starter motor, connected to the crankshaft that at any point they go Vroom! and start it. We'll see. Uh, so, yeah, just eliminate the turbine and uh, I, I kind of fell, fell off my topic of open uh, engine layout. So we could have, let's just say six cylinders. I mean, that's, I think that's a, a, a safe bet that the next generation motor will be six cylinders but you could have a 1.8 liter inline six perhaps you know enticing someone like bmw to be like hey that that's marketable um and you know maybe even someone like porsche not porsche per se but a flat six i mean packaging right an inline six would be probably the most ideal packaging for an f1 car i think maybe the v6 is um, it is compact, but the smoothness of an inline six, the, the um, harmonic balancing of an inline six and a, and a flat six, they're, they're essentially perfectly smooth. Also, I think an inline six would sound the best. I could be wrong, a flat six could sound great. The V6 will be the, generally speaking, the less acoustically pleasing motor. 
um, layout of the three. Um, they're not just the firing order of a V6, what have you. But of course, V6 doesn't mean one thing. There's many degrees of V6. I mean, remember Audi was running a 120 degree V6? That's like this. So 180 would of course be flat. That's not even not flexible enough to do but yeah, flat, uh, a flat six. And then uh, inline six, boom, just six in a row. But yeah, wouldn't that be amazing? So they're electrically supercharged, so you're not losing any of the f marketability of the hybrid, and um, of course the efficiency would be unbelievable. And then exhaust gases would just pour right out of the exhaust. <laughs> rev to whatever. I mean, honestly, a supercharged engine can rev to whatever the hell they wanted to. It's still the, it could be hypothetically a very similar concept to what we have now. Um, but it's just maybe maybe even more integrated, like the turbine, no, not turbine, compressor, and um, and the you know electric motor could be more integrated as one unit, which would be very interesting. Uh, essentially, electric turbo, supercharger, whatever you want it, super turbo. Well, so I, I really just thought of this the other day, and I had to kind of make a video about it. But that could be that could be the answer in. Uh, I think about it essentially night and day. <laughs> I have multiple documents uh, con and concepts for the future of Formula One and what I think uh, could be. And uh, it looks like Liberty is open to some of these ideas, uh, which is brilliant. And uh, yeah, could be cool. So I'm going to end this video now and uh, probably just start another one up. Maybe talk a little, about, a little bit more about Liberty Media. They, it's, it's exciting times for Formula One and uh, no more Bernie Ecclestone for better or worse we shall see alright um, Barry from Very Fast Cars signing off on to the next video talk to you soon guys peace